Welcome back to my channel. Today you are watching this video because it is our weekly devotional. We started the weekly devotional because it was part of our Homestead Homemaking series that we were doing here on YouTube. Um, the Homestead Homemaking series eventually ran over into a Homestead Homemaking group and we still have that Homestead Homemaking group even though we're not actively doing the Homestead Homemaking series here on YouTube. Now, um, as I mentioned in my last weekly devotional, I have been asked multiple times by different people to please go ahead and keep doing the devotions every week. The devotions were really helpful for a lot of women and honest to goodness, let me just tell you right now, I don't do it to just help others. I do it to help me too because I need these devotions just as much as everybody else does. Um, and this week I had actually, we I didn't post a devotional last week. This is actually the video that I wanted to post last week. I recorded it and then life got in the way and I accidentally deleted it off of my phone before I could get it on my computer. So needless to say, I had to re-record this all over again, which is fine because um, maybe I have a better handle on it or maybe there's something that I might say that'll connect with you a lot better today than, than last so week. So this week we are touching on being overwhelmed. I think we've talked about this a little bit before. We talk about it often in our homestead homemaking group, very often, about being a homestead mom, being overwhelmed, um, just being a mom in general. Not all of us in the group are homesteaders. A lot of us are from different walks of life. Some of us have careers. Some of us are just career, our careers at home, right? And so, you know, it's not necessarily always just the housework or a farm or something like that. It could be emotions, it could be relationships that you're dealing with, and all of this all in one setting, it just gets overwhelming, right? And if there's one thing you should know about me is that I don't do well overwhelmed. I try to avoid being overwhelmed at all costs because then I turn into a monster. Like, I turn into a person that I don't even like. Now, I'm saying this and my kitchen renovation has been happening and so renovations are awesome. You get new and amazing things while you're doing it and we've been doing it all on our own. Mostly my husband. I'm just here kind of for support. <laughs> but you can see that my kitchen's not completely done yet. I still have the stickies on the cabinets. I still have to get the hardware. We have a hole in the wall. <laughs> there's, But we're putting up a tile backsplash but that's not happening right now. Um, you know there's different things like I got this piece of hair sticking up here. There are different things that need to be happening. And while this looks beautiful right now, right? It looks awesome. It took a long time to get to that point. And um, a lot of just stuff to get here, right? So we had to pull out the old stuff and bring in the new stuff. And you're probably sitting there thinking, oh, this is the analogy she's going to use today. And I'm not. The analogy that I'm going to use today is that today I have to use my child's Bible because I can't even find my own Bible. You don't even want to see my living room right now. My living room is still in a chaotic disaster mode. I can't find half the stuff that I need at all. I might have a brand new, awesome, amazing kitchen, but half the crap I need, I can't find, okay? I'm being a mom, homeschool starting soon. I'm way behind on ordering homeschool stuff. We have different things that are happening with the farm animals and that's a whole other story for a whole other day. We have, have the book that I'm writing, which is awesome and amazing, but it's due by September 1st. And I still have about 30,000 words left to write of it. Yeah. And um, so between housework and being a mom and being a wife and being a friend and working, um, because I'm actually working on, on the book and the Homesteaders of America conference, and all of this stuff has just kind of come and it's starting to crash in and it's kind of like, okay, now I'm starting to feel overwhelmed. Now we're getting down to the wire and I'm constantly approached by people and they're like, how do you do it all? How do you do it? I wrote a blog post on this years ago. Okay. Years ago. This is how long I've been dealing with this. <laughs> I don't do it all. Something is always lacking, but I can't control that, okay, because when you have 10 different things that are happening, you're a mom, you're a wife, you're a homemaker, you have, some of you might have a farm to run, some of you might have uh, a career, a demanding career or job, when you have a lot of different things that are happening, something's got to give. Do you do it all? Can you accomplish it all? I have a video on that too, I'm going to link up here. 
So I'm, today I'm going to kind of run over a few things because I have found that my overwhelming feelings actually doesn't stem from not being able to do it all. It actually stems from expectations of myself, expectations that others have on me or that I think they have on me, and my mindset and my priorities are normally the things that are the worst because they're out of place. So today in my child's Bible, and I will try to put um, these scriptures up here too, we are going to start in Psalms, okay? Psalms chapter 1, verse 1 through 3. And it said, Blessed is the person who obeys the law of the Lord. They don't follow the advice of evil people. They don't make it a habit of doing what sinners do. They don't join those who make fun of the Lord and his law. Instead, the law of the Lord gives them joy. They think about his law day and night. That kind of person is like a tree that is planted near a stream of water. It always bears its fruit at the right time. Its leaves don't dry up, and everything godly people do turns out well. Okay, well, I'm sitting here and I'm thinking about that, and I'm like, well, I kind of failed at that today, right? <laughs> but it's actually, when we go through that scripture, and I think you're going to find this throughout the scriptures that I'm telling you, it has nothing to do with our ability. The only thing it's asking us to do is meditate on the Lord every single day. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you why in just a second. It says in here, I'm going to reread this, it's verse 2, it says, Instead, the law, the law of the Lord gives them joy. They think about his law day and night. Now, I'm going to write that scripture off because uh, otherwise I'll go back to it. I have a little cheat sheet over here because you know me, <laughs> I'm overwhelmed, i got to be organized. I'm going to go forward. Psalm 139, verse 23 through 24, and it says, God, see what is in my heart, know what is there, test me, know what I'm thinking. See if there's anything in my life you don't like. Help me live in the way that is always right. And see, we're talking about our mindset again here. We're actually going to come back to that scripture, but I wanted to read that really quickly. Now we're going to move forward to Philippians 4, 8. So I'm actually going to break this scripture up into do two different parts. We're going to go back to the other scripture as well. I'm going to start with Philippians 4, 8, but then I'm going to go back to Philippians 4, 4, and you're going to see why. So Philippians 4, 8 says, finally, my brothers and sisters, always think about what is true. Think about what is noble, right, and pure. Think about what is lovely and worthy of respect. If anything is excellent or worthy of praise, think about those kinds of things. Do what you have learned or received and heard from me. Follow my example. The God who gives peace will be with you. I am finding that a lot of times we are talking about, you know, when we're feeling overwhelmed, we're thinking of this, of the situation and the circumstances that we're in. But the reality is that everyone has circumstances that can make them overwhelmed. Why are some people more easily able to get through that versus other people? I mean, some people could have a mental breakdown while other people just keep on going. Um, and we're specifically talking about Christians here. And I feel like it's really important to give you these scriptures because all of them, almost every single one of them, is talking about your mindset. And every single one of them is saying about thinking about the Lord and his law and being in his word every single day. And I think that's one of the biggest things that we lack as Christians, especially as moms. Either we don't have time or we think we don't have the time to get into God's word every day. Or we just don't do it. That's me. We just don't do it. We think, okay, God understands, I'm busy, I'm doing stuff, I just don't have time to do it, and I just am not going to do it, right? But, Scripture clearly lays out that if we are in His Word and meditating on His Word and on Him every single day, I think we're going to begin to find that things just naturally become less overwhelming for us. And it's because we're hiding His Word in our heart. And so subconsciously, when we come across these situations and things that we're dealing with in an overwhelming situation or just that day in general, when we have hidden his word in our heart and we're meditating on him every day already, then we're starting our day or finishing our day with God. And unknowingly, he's working within us. And we are, you know, it's like when you watch a movie and then 10 days later, you have a dream that was kind of similar, but you're, cause you're still kind of like... Why did I have that dream when I haven't watched a movie or seen anything like this recently, you know? But subconsciously, your mind was still thinking on that situation, so you had a dream about it. Well, hiding God's word in your heart is a lot like that. When we meditate on him and hide his word in our heart every single day, we're subconsciously 
becoming more like him. We are subconsciously choosing godly ways versus non-godly ways. And being overwhelmed isn't a godly way, right? And especially not how we react when we're feeling overwhelmed. Um, and Philippians 4 8 is telling us that whatever is true, right, noble, pure, think on these things. Whatever is praiseworthy, think on these things. So we know that when we're feeling overwhelmed and we're thinking about all the overwhelming things, that it's not in Christ. That's not Christ's will for us. Christ's will for us is to think on the good things, the things that are praiseworthy, that are true, that are pure, that are noble. And so we have to remember that. And I'm going to go to the next scripture because it's really, really important. So 2 Corinthians 10, 5 says, I destroy every claim and every reason that keeps people from knowing God. I keep every thought under control in order to make it obey Christ. I, and in one of the other versions it says, I hold every thought captive. Okay. And so very clearly God put us in order of our own thoughts. And how do we do that? How do we get rid of those overwhelming thoughts and feelings? And it's by hiding his word and meditating on his word every single day. So let's go back to Philippians. And I want to read the next part of that, okay? It's actually the first part before the final and brothers and sisters think on what is true, noble, righteous. And, and this is actually starting in Philippians 4, 4. The last scripture was Philippians 4, 8. Philippians 4, 4 says, Always be joyful because you belong to the Lord. I will say it again. Be joyful. Let everyone know how gentle you are. The Lord is coming soon. Don't worry about anything. No matter what help happens, tell God about everything. Ask and pray and give thanks to him. Then God's peace will watch over your hearts and your minds. He will do this because you belong to Christ Jesus. God's peace can never be completely understood. My favorite part of Philippians 4, 8, this was 4, 8 through 7, and it says, don't worry about anything. This is verse 6. No matter what happen, happens, tell God about everything. Ask and pray and give thanks to him. I think oftentimes, and I'm sorry, my lighting is really weird because I had to turn my light off. And but So oftentimes I think that we think that we're going to bother God with our frivolous things and our frivolous emotions or what we think is frivolous. And in fact, in Philippians 4, 6, it says, no matter what happens, no matter what you're going through, tell God about everything. Ask and pray and give thanks to him. This is a really important reminder because we can, we can talk about setting our mind on Christ-like things, oh, hiding God's word in our heart, but when it comes down to it, why aren't we talking to God about these situations? Why aren't we talking to him and saying, you know what, God, I'm feeling really overwhelmed. Could you please help me in this situation? And so Philippians 4 reminds us not only to, to look on whatever is true and noble and pure and righteous and holy in him, whatever is praiseworthy to think on those things, but even before that, it says, don't worry about anything. Tell God everything. The thing is, when we can go back in some of these scriptures, one of it says, search my heart, O God, and anything that you don't like, let me know about it. God knows our hearts more than anyone. And so sometimes we think, well, I don't have to pray. God knows what I'm thinking. Sometimes I think that God probably says that in scripture divinely because <laughs> he knows that it's actually better for us to just pray than it is for him to just know, you know, it's, he wants that relationship with you. He wants that connection with you. Not only is it good for God because God loves us so much, but it's really good for us because it allows us to talk to someone or anyone um, and really feel peace. And it says scripture just told us that we don't understand his peace. His peace is not understandable. It's incomprehensible, but yet it comes and he allows it to rest on us. So we talked, we've, we've talked about you know, prayer and supplication. We've talked about um, feeling overwhelmed and, and changing our mindset and hiding God's word in our heart. Those are really the places that we need to start with this. Well, what happens when it comes down to reality? You know, sometimes we have to be real with ourselves. Sometimes we just make mistakes, right? We, we are overwhelmed. We don't want to talk to God. We don't even want to think about God in that moment. What happens then, right? So there are some practical life examples that we can pull from, and we've talked about these before, but 
there are ways that you can um, avoid being overwhelmed too. You know, sometimes we're like, oh, God will fix it. But then sometimes it falls on us. We got to fix it too. The number one reason I often find myself overwhelmed is because my priorities are out of place. So with work and, and farm and canning and garden and motherhood and wifely duties and homemaking, you know, I have found that when my priorities are not on my home, my husband and my child, and my priorities are more, more on my farm and my canning and which just kind of falls under homemaking. But um, when it's more on work, especially work, then I'm finding that I become more overwhelmed. And so God put in place priorities for us and he put in place standards for us as women, as homemakers, if you're a homemaker. And it's always has been first, child, second, home. Home, everything in the home is, is coming first. I have found that when I'm focusing on my home and my family first, then I'm not as overwhelmed and stressed out. It's just the truth. It's just It's just the truth. And now I don't always like that because I enjoy working. I enjoy having a job. Um, I enjoy writing. I enjoy planning things. So it's hard for me because those are things that I enjoy doing. And that's great. But when my family becomes less of a priority and my homemaking becomes less of a priority, then that's where I really find the overwhelming feelings come in because then it's overwhelming for my family as well. Now, of course, my family helps me, of course, but there's nothing quite like having a homemaker present in the home. It really kind of makes everything flow together. Uh, your husband needs you, your son needs you, your daughter needs you, um, or if you don't have kids, you know, your spouse, your spouse needs you as a homemaker, believe it or not. And so that's one thing, you know, prioritizing your time, prioritizing your priorities um, and, and what you're doing. But the next thing is letting go of what you can't control. Now, I'm not going to mention names because I forgot to ask her if I could mention the conversation that we had. She's on YouTube um, and she's a friend of mine and she had messaged us, me and a, another friend the other day. And she said, um, I, I'm feeling so overwhelmed right now. She said, I have, I'm canning day, day in, day out. That's all I'm doing. She said, the garden, garden is overwhelming me. And now they have a garden that'll feed them through the winter. Um, I'm canning all day long. When I, when I'm not canning, I'm freezing. We have homeschool. We have this, we have that. My house is lacking. How in the world am I going to accomplish all of this? And, um, you know, she's having a hard time because her, her teenage girl is growing up and she's making college plans. And, you know, there are a lot of things that are happening in her life. And, um, one of the things that I told her was that sometimes in certain seasons of life, you just have to let go. Okay. Um, you know, we, a lot of times we get caught up in feeling like we have to do things in the event of what if, right? We have to have a garden and can every single thing. So what if we need it in the winter? And that's a great mindset to have, but it's not worth your peace, okay? Um, there are a lot of things, you know, we live in a modern society. When we try to take, um, and really put ourselves back into a, a non-modern society. We're going to stress ourselves out because our lives now are a lot different than they were a hundred years ago. But at the same time, we have the amenities to say, you know what, I'm going to take a step back. And if I can't can all of my corn, then I will go and I will buy organic corn, right? Um, and so we feel like we have to get all of these things done. And I'm going to tell you, in some seasons, you have to choose your priorities. You have to choose what's going to get done and what's not going to get done. Because for a lot of women, including this friend of mine and myself, we still work. We still hold jobs that are outside of the home. Some because we choose to, I choose to, I don't have to, but I choose to. Some because, um, 
we have to. And we're in seasons of life that look a little bit different than our grandmothers, great grandmothers, great great grandmothers. And so I was telling her, I said, you know, your daughter, you have three more summers with your daughter. I think she only has three more summers. Are you going to spend those summers stressing out because you have a garden that is really, really big and can feed you all winter, um, which is awesome, but is all your time going to be spent on that or is it going to be spent on spending these last three summers with your daughter? And so it might look something like having a smaller garden the following year, right? Not, not getting rid of the garden, that's not what I'm saying, but having something more manageable. It could look like quitting a job or simplifying a job. You know, our seasons change as homemakers. We begin our seasons as new wives and our homemaking season in that way can be really good or really bad because in my case, I didn't know how to be a homemaker. I'm still learning how to be a homemaker. And then we go into motherhood, parenthood, for many of us. And we have messy floors and sticky countertops. And I know a lot of people are calling me crazy for redoing my kitchen, but you know what? I wanted a new kitchen. I wanted it. I, did, <laughs> I, I wanted a new kitchen. I haven't had a kitchen like this ever the entire 11 years we've been married. And so I wanted it. And I got it. But... You know, there are seasons that we go through and sometimes we just have to let it go, right? So maybe you're letting go of a garden. Maybe you're letting go of a job. Maybe you're letting go of a hobby. Maybe you're letting go of expectations of yourself, right? Maybe you're letting go of expectations of your spouse or your kids. Whatever it is, there's something that could be bothering you, making you feel overwhelmed. Maybe we need to look at letting it go for a little while and then coming back to it. Doesn't mean you're going to let it go for forever. It does mean that you can let it go a little bit and reprioritize. And it's okay to do that. It is. I promise. For me, it looks like letting go of a job last year. I let go of a job and I picked up another one, but it's a lot different. Um, I let it go. And it brought me so much peace and allowed me to learn how to be a better homemaker because I had more time at home and I had more time to focus on my family. Um, it looks like me only choosing four things to plant, big crops in my garden. And I only have a kitchen garden, but I'm getting a lot from that garden this year. Um, versus... A big gigantic garden that I couldn't keep up with because of the season that I'm in right now. I'm in a busy season. I'm in a busy season of life, not like summer, fall, spring, winter, but I'm at a peak time in my career, in my life. Um, maybe I just got to let it go for a little while, you know, maybe I got to let something go. It depends on the person, it depends on their situation, it depends on what's most important to them. Um, for us, the garden isn't, you know, it's really important to me, but I also know that I have a lot of stuff that I can lean on from local farmers and have canned from them and orchards and things like that. Um, I don't know. I don't know what it is for you, but anyhow. So those are the three things I wanted to talk to you about today about being overwhelmed. It's, it's changing your mindset, hiding the word of God in your heart, and changing your mindset to reflect godly mindset instead of your own. Starting there, reading the word, getting into the word every day, and thinking on things that are praiseworthy. When the dog runs across the floor, or when you are stressed out from canning, or when you haven't ordered your homeschool stuff like I haven't yet. Yeah, there are things that you have to prioritize and have that mindset or else you're going to lose it, right? The next thing is priorities, putting your priorities in place. Homemaking and family and husband and children come first. And then the homestead and um, 
you know, to to an extent. Obviously, gardening and canning is part of homemaking. Um, and then it's just letting go. You know what? At the end of the day, if you can't do it all, don't. Get rid of something. If there's something that is not really important that you could let go of, let it go, girl. Let it go. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. So that's it for me today. That's this week's devotional. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I'm going to try to get these up every single week, but again, it depends on if I have technically challenged mine that day or if I even have time that day. So I promise everyone keeps asking to do a kitchen tour. My kitchen's not done yet. Um, I'm not even sure the backsplash will be done this year. It might be winter time, um, but I will try to do a quick tour um, sometime in the next couple weeks once I get the hardware for my cabinets and pull the film off and all that stuff. So hope you guys have a great week. Happy homesteading and happy homemaking.